Ryan Jones, TNS's official photographer. Anyone that's ever been to a New Saints game, no doubt has seen you hauling a couple of suitcases around. But of course, you're not going on your holiday. They follow photographic equipment. Indeed they are. Um, I have a couple of cameras that I take around. You're never sure whether one will malfunction. They use the secondary one behind the goal, weather permitting. And we're looking back to the season just finished. From a photography point of view, what was your favourite game and why? Well, it's got to be the Champions League uh, games because they are they take things to a different level. They're challenging, we're out of our comfort zone, big style. And it is exciting as a photographer, a player and, and as a manager, I'm sure. I'm always trying to take the uh, perfect shot. And this is an opportunity for me too, to be taken in a more professional arena. And as a photographer, no doubt you want those nice, dry, bright conditions. Well, summer and summer, all the boxes to be ticked. It's very nice to have dry weather. I've had my share of wet weather, very cold weather. Uh, but I do like uh, a dry, cloudy, it's better images and there's less uh, disruption to the, co the, the exposure. Um, but uh, yeah, a nice dry day is preferable, uh, particularly uh, winter time when you get a lot of rain, you get it very cold at times and an hour and a half on pitch side is not the best place to be it, but it's freezing. And if we're talking to a member of staff or a player and we ask them for their worst game of the season, no doubt that would be a defeat of one description or another, but for you, Brian, the worst game of the season must be weather-related. Well, it, it's, it, it, it certainly is, and if it's wet and windy and we lose, that is a terrible game, and it's, uh, it doesn't make you feel good at all at the end of it. And you're not going to win every game, but uh, losing is one thing, but losing in distant conditions is not the best thing that can happen to you. And we work together closely, of course, during the season, so I get to see a lot of your photographs, and I'm not saying it now because you're sitting in front of me, but I'm, I'm very impressed indeed. But what shots from this past season stand out for you personally, and why? Well, I like the shots behind the goal because it is the ultimate, uh, it is the ultimate piece of action. A, g a goal being scored with the net bulging, and you see the celebration you see the despair, the goal scorer is delighted, the depression and frustration by the keeper and defenders where they've let a, a goal escape them. That's, it's, uh, it, it is the emotion that's captured at that moment in time that is quite appealing. Those are my favourite shots as well. How difficult is it to, to capture those? And for the shot, for example, where we see the two contrasting emotions and the ball in the back of the net, how many individual photographs do you have to take to wade through to get the one that's just right? Well, the, the, the secondary camera behind the uh, goal is operated by a remote trigger on the primary camera, and, and you will get a lot of stuff that is of no use to you. However, you have to have that to get the shots that are really important, the ones where the goal is being struck, the goal has been scored, um, without that, you, ca you, you, you don't get the same piece of action. What I like most of all is where I've actually captured the scorer and the goal being scored on the two cameras simultaneously. They both work at slightly different speeds, so you're not going to get everyone looking the same. But that's the exciting part of it. You know, you've taken the shot, you've been to the match, you go back and have a look at what you've got, and then the adrenaline begins to flow because I've really got a good one today. And that means a lot to me as a photographer. And you take hundreds of photos during the course of a game. How, again, difficult is it to wade through and select the ones that just make it the right side of the line for you? The, the, the camera that I use can take 11 frames a second, so you have to be a bit selective where you pull the trigger to minimize the uh, post-shoot editing. Uh, but there, there are some benefits for that too, because in a sequence of shots you can capture the absolute optimum moment and that's quite important because it's it's a nice photograph that means something to the player and to the viewer alike 
So that, that's, that's an exciting part of it. The other thing that's interesting too is that at every game that y where you're, you're undertaking photography, you start with a blank sheet. You have nothing. And you're just waiting for that moment. And you can't take your eyes off anything because you know something may happen at any, any second. So you have to concentrate and be prepared and hopefully get the shot in that magical moment. And finally, Brian, young people perhaps who are watching this video now, they're starting out themselves on the road of professional photography. In a nutshell, what sort of advice could you give to them? Well, I can only share with others what I did myself is that I went on uh, a photographic course at Yale College. <clears throat> uh, I knew how to use a camera, or I thought I did, but uh, using it technically and, and for sports action, as well as other things that I do, is more complicated than you think. So it's, it's well worth your time getting uh, yourself on a digital photography course, even at beginners or intermediate or advanced. You'll always pick up something, and I found that to be invaluable in, in my journey as a photographer. Great advice there, Brian. Thank you for your time today, and we look forward, as always, to some exciting shots in the forthcoming season well, with the New Saints. I'm looking forward to the Champions League draw and uh, what comes after that. So a break for two or three weeks now and then uh, back on the touchline waiting uh, to catch the action.